Hello, Mr. Moody, we can't hear you. Mr. Mwede, now we can hear some sounds. Samuel, can you hear me? Shields. 
Listo, Ashiva. Yes, buena muy bien. Back with light more. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just making your co-hosts right on the way. You are good to go. Thank you. Okay, let us wait for the others as we start our class. We still have a few minutes before we can start. So let us wait for a few minutes, then we can start our lesson. In the meantime, there's a part last time we had done up to a certain point. I think question number 10. We shall proceed from there. Want to share a document here?
Mr. Washila? Mr. Washila? Mr. Washila? So we have a few minutes to start our lesson. So I think last time we had gone up to question number nine. Question number nine. 
list question number 10, question 10. Somewhere there, question number 10. That is the point where I want us to, to start from for today. Members, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Members? I don't want us to look at question. Look at question number. Question, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. It is now two. I want us to start our lesson for today. I believe you are doing well. You are keeping distance. You are safe at home and ensuring that all is well. So for now, I believe as the other members keep on joining us. At the moment in the house, we have that two of them. Thank you for making time and being with us. I believe all of you can hear me. And today is a good day that God has given unto us so that we can have this session for today. So I can see a number of you have Calvin, I can see Kanuki Kelly, I can see Joseph, I can see Lewis, Leloy, uh, Kirui, Nixon, uh, Jero and others. And Mark Duarte, I can see you, Nelson, Kalongo, among others. So uh, we shall we shall have our session for today the same way we had it last, last time. Uh, last time we did the paper, we did the revision of the paper that we did and it was very nice. I believe many of us benefited out of that. <clears throat> and I want to thank each and every one of you because of finding time and finding this content that we are giving to you uh, very necessary. So therefore, I want to thank each and every one of you. We had gone up to question number 10 last week. And I would want you, anytime we are doing the revision, to make use of, uh, get a book or a piece of paper, which you can make use of. Instead of just uh, looking uh, at the screen, just like a television. So therefore, I would want you to just move on, just a mutua. I can see you have something. Uh, please raise up your hands again, mutua, so that I can get you. I still cannot still get you at the moment, uh, but all the same. I would want us to continue where we had stopped 
uh, last time. So I'm going to share some, some notes, uh, the marking scheme with you. And please let us not even attempt interfering with the screen. So therefore, this is a part I want us to look at uh, what we did last time. I want to remove some of the things that you can see in your screen there. I don't want you to see yourself on the screen. Uh, so therefore, let me do a few things so that we can stop uh, making sure that you don't, you people don't see yourself on the screen there. Allow me to disorganize a few things here. Okay. Let me share the screen again. So therefore, I want us to go through, there's a part which is a bit uh, giving me some challenges here. For those few who see themselves like uh, Moses is written on the screen, uh, please don't mind seeing yourself, but I think I'll disable it, you not see yourself there. I would want us to look at question number 10. Question number 10. Uh, ways in which the business may be responsible to its consumers. Ways in which the business may be responsible to its consumers. And one of the way is giving the right information concerning the product. Giving the right information concerning the product that they are selling. So the business has to show responsibility by giving the right information. If you are doing the advertisement, give the right information. The other one being stabilizing prices of goods, avoiding a scenario whereby you keep changing the prices of your products, maybe depending on the market uh, demand. The other way is leaving, leaving, leaving the item, the burden of buying from different Manufacturers, leaving the consumers burden of buying from different uh, manufacturers by ensuring that all the products that you need are there. So you have to avail variety of products. The other way is providing them with the right goods, both the right quantity and also the right quantity. So you have there are some businessmen who are building. Who are, we call them as scrupulous. These are businessmen who normally interfere with the quantity, quantity of the item that is being sold. For example, you find, if for example, it's a bag, a bag of maize. You find somebody in a bag of maize, if it is meant to be 90 kg, somebody will remove a few kgs and then sell it as 90 kg. If somebody else is buying something, uh, Mr. Ashila, please work on the, the background uh, to avoid this scenario. We are going to remove those arrows that some of you are sharing on the screen. Uh, then question number 11. Question number 11. Uh, business can assist Okay, the different ways through which the business can assist in controlling pollution. Uh, we talked about recycling the waste. Number two, controlling or releasing hazardous chemicals into the air. Some of these, I'm just highlighting them because last time we concluded with these few questions. And then avoiding releasing 
effluents into the water masses. We talked about the rivers, lakes, and the oceans. And then use of environmental friendly chemicals, which we say the chemicals that are being released in the environment should be environmental friendly. And then ensuring that they don't engage in any unlawful activities. At times you find some businesses because their raw material is a uh, timber, you find them cutting down of trees without minding of the community allowed. And then avoiding depletion of local resources by the using, uh, using the resources appropriately. And then use of uh, avoiding mass production. Then question number 12, ways in which goods can be classified? These are questions that I thought uh, it was very simple to some of us. But when I was marking the exam, I came to realize that some of us had forgotten the classification of goods. Others could only like producers. Could only like producers. Then the next point, the right consumer. Remember, you have to show producer and consumer, intermediate and finished. So you don't just light at a split, you split them. And these are producers, intermediate, consumers, ETC. So you have to ensure that uh, you avoid. So therefore, the classification are as follows the, the way they appear. You have the producer and consumer goods. Remember, producer goods are the ones that are used in production of other goods. Or the consumer goods are the goods that are intended for the final use, For example, when we talk of consumer goods, further classified, there is what we call convenience goods, goods that consumers buy regularly. Then you have the shopping goods. Then you also have uh, speciality. These are just classification of consumer goods, convenience, shopping, and speciality goods. Then we have the intermediate goods. Intermediate goods are the goods that are used in the production of other goods. They are used in the, in the production process. Then we have the finished goods. Finished goods are the goods that have undergone through the manufacturing process. Then we have the public. These are the goods that are intended for use by the members of the public. They are intended to be used by the general uh, public. Then we have the private goods, goods that are meant for use for a certain group of people. You can have somebody operating, okay, having a private car, which can be used by you and the other member's family. It's meant for you. Uh, the other thing, working on the, 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 the internet here. The other thing is material and non-material goods. Material goods are those goods that are tangible. Yeah? Material goods. Then we have non-material goods. Goods that are, that do not occupy any mass. In this case, in business, non-material goods we refer to as the services. So we have the physical goods, and then material services. Then we have the free and economic goods. On top of the free goods, these are goods that we call gift of nature. Goods that we call gift of nature. Gift of nature. And this gift of nature are the goods that are God given. And, uh, goods that are God given. They are provided by nature. Then we have economic goods. The economic goods are the goods that have monetary value. Goods that have monetary value. We call them economic goods. Then we have the perishable goods. Perishable goods are the goods that can go, can get spoiled very easily. And then we have Durable goods in the same state without getting spoiled. 
goods that can last for, for, for a long time in the same state without getting uh, spoiled. Then you can look at question number 13. This is a question that many of us uh, had a lot of challenges concerning the kind of characteristics which was being described uh, in, the, in, the, in the examination there. <clears throat> uh, the first part was describing that human wants an address or unlimited, address or unlimited. Uh, two, they are insatiable. Human wants are insatiable being described by the second part. And then number three, to show that human wants are habitual. They are habitual. And then the part four, it was describing that they are recurrent. It was describing that they are recurrent. Uh, is, I don't have the full description that was being written there. I would have read for you and then give you the the, the, the point there. Then, question number 14. Listens why a customer satisfies human wants. Listens why a customer satisfies human wants. I think. Uh, some of the answers included as follows. There's a problem in the way the questions appear in the marking scheme here. So I beg pardon for that. There's a way the question was leading. It was leading like, uh, this is why consumers satisfy uh, basic want before secondary want. So question number 14 has a problem. So let us not rely on the answers appearing on the on the on the on the screen. <clears throat> Let us look at the questions. This one's why a uh, uh, consumers satisfies basic want before secondary want. And some of the answers are as follows: uh, human wants or basic wants are essential for survival. One cannot live without them. If you are to look at the basic quant here, we are referring to, to the food, shelter, and clothing. If you look at those three items, they are very essential for survival. Food, shelter, and clothing. So therefore, they are essential for survival. Uh, two, they cannot be postponed. You cannot say that I will not eat for the next one week, yeah, you realize that you may lose your life because of their essential, their young, uh, they are, you cannot postpone them. And then the other thing, they are felt needs. Why are we saying that they are felt? It is because if you don't satisfy them, you will feel, you'll feel that for example, if you don't if you don't take your lunch, you realize that your body will be asking for food, so you feel it. As compared to the secondary wants, which are not felt, one can stay without them even without feeling any difference. The other thing is that they are satisfied before secondary want and among other points. So question number 14 has on the screen, Ted, to look at the class, uh, characteristics of uh, human wants in general. But we should not, we'll not, we are not, uh, we shall not ignore the question number 14. We can look at it as the characteristics of human wants. Their address, when you say that their address, it means there are so many. They are unlimited. Number two, they cannot, uh, they are complementary. General human wants, they are complementary, meaning satisfaction of one want uh, leads to satisfaction of another one. They are complementary. 
And then the other thing, they are universal. They apply to every human being. They are universal. And then another characteristic of human want is that some are habitual, some are habitual, meaning once an individual develops a taste for a given product, he or she can use it over and over again. A good example, the moment you develop a taste for a certain product, let's say it is a soda, you have been used to a certain taste, let's say pineapple or orange. The moment you get used to that, you will realize that anytime you go to buy a soda, you will always ask the one that you have been used to. So meaning that you as a sort of a habit. If you get used in taking coffee every day, you will realize that it will become part of your habit. And anytime if you don't take coffee, you'll feel that there is something which you are missing. And then the other thing is that human wants varies in urgency and intensity. I guess what we mean that human wants varies in intensity and urgency is that human wants uh, people of different ages have different wants. For example, a young child who is in class two has different wants compared Maybe a young child who is maybe 10 years old has a different one compared, yeah, as compared to another kid who is 15 years old. When you're in class two, for example, maybe your wants by that time were only, you only wanted to, to have something like a, a toy, a ball, uh, and maybe some some of the playing those but as you grow older you will realize that you will realize that uh, your want changes your want changes at this moment your wants are different at this moment maybe you would want to have a mobile phone a computer a bicycle or maybe a PlayStation. That is your want at this moment. But as time goes by, when you'll be around 20 years, your wants will not be the ones that you are having. You realize that your wants by that time will be different. You'll be thinking of something maybe at the age of 20, uh, you'll be thinking about maybe uh or that you're going to the university and your wants will be different so therefore human wants changes with uh agency and age and even circumstance just for a minute is a document i'm opening i realize that there are some of us who are playing around with the, with the shared screen which is there, which I've removed. Uh, I want to work on a few things before I share it back to you. And then the other thing is that when you say that they are recurring, human wants are recurring, which simply means that satisfaction of your work, of the wants keeps on reappearing. Your satisf the satisfaction of wants keeps on reappearing. One satisfied, you want to be satisfied uh, once you satisfy a certain wants, you want to keep on satisfying it. A good example, when you, for example, go for entertainment and then you get entertained, you will realize that even tomorrow you may want to be entertained again. So therefore, uh, human that one shows that human wants are keeps on keeps on recurring. Satisfaction of one wants keeps on we are peeling over and over again. I would want us now to look at question number 15. 
question number 15. Question number 15 was talking about goods and services. This is another simple question concerning goods and services. But many of the students end up not performing or scoring in this particular question. Not that it is because it is very hard, but simply because they are not able to show the differences. The differences must come out clearly. For example, that goods are tangible. In tangible, it simply means goods can be seen, touched, or felt. So let us give that one as a, as a, as a differences. Goods are tangible. That is, they can be seen, touched, or felt. On the other hand, you go to the services. And anytime you are giving the differences, always ensure that you, you do what? You come up, you make use of a table. You say goods are tangible, that is, they can be seen, touched, or felt. Services are untouchable because they are actions. They are human actions. Then you can look at the second one. Goods can be stored. Goods can be stored. And then you go to the services. Services cannot be stored since they are highly perishable. So the difference has to come out very clearly. And then the other one, when you say that goods can be standardized, goods can be standardized. Okay. So Talking of the word standardized, it simply means goods can be produced uniformly. You can have uh, phones produced that forms phones, clothing, the same. Somebody can make clothes that looks alike. It means that they can be standardized. Yeah? If you look at the book that you are using, your friend was in a book. That means you can produce them in uniform. But when you say that services cannot be standardized, you have to show the differences. You say services cannot be standardized since they vary from one service provider to another. And that is why uh, you realize when people are rendering services, they vary from one service provider to another. And I would ask you a question. When you are going for a kinyozi, do you just go to any of them? No. Why? Because there are those, there are those places where you know if I go to so and so kinyozi, his services are better than so and so. And that is why even the teachers do not teach the same. You can be teaching the same concept, but you are teaching differently. Values. When you go to a hospital, when you go to even to a court of law, you cannot just look for any lawyer. You want somebody who will present you well. So services varies from one service provider to another. The other point that you need to give there, when you say that goods are separable from the producer, Goods can be separ goods are separable from the producer, which is true. On the side of the services, you say that services are inseparable from the service provider. Services are inseparable from the service provider. And that way, you'll get your point. Uh, the other thing that you need to, to look at, when you say that uh, Goods are produced at different times as to when they are consumed, which is true. Goods are from production and consumption of goods are done at different times. But when you're talking about services, you say production and consumption of services takes place at the same time. That way you get your point correct. So therefore, this is a very simple question, but if you don't approach it in a, in a certain way, you may end up not scoring. For example, I saw a student, one of the Form 1 classes, lighting, goods are tangible, services are not. Goods can change ownership, services cannot. 
When you write it that way, you may not score because you have to show the different signs. Are we together, together on that point? Good. Then, I would want us to look at the next question. The next question number 16 was talking about economic resources. When you talk of the economic resources, remember you have different types of resources. The first thing that we need to ask ourselves, what are resources? Resources is anything that you use to achieve a given objective. Very good. Then we ask ourselves, there are different types of resources. Okay, there are some which are God-given. Remember we talked about a uh, gift of nature, those resources that are God-given, but they do not have monetary value. Do you remember them? Very nice. Then we also talked about man-made resources, resources that are made by man. Man has taken part in their creation. Then we also talked about those resources that are God-given, but they have a monetary value. Remember when you are talking about land, land can be sold. Do you remember? Then when you talk about levers, what is the economic benefit of levers? Remember the fishing activities? Very well. Then when you remember wildlife, how do you think wildlife bring in income in the, in the country? Do you remember talking about tourism? Very nice. So therefore, we have economic resources. Economic resources here, we are talking about those resources which have economic value. By economic value, we mean they have what you call monetary value. You cannot obtain them for free. You have to pay for them. Very nice. So let us go now go back to the question. Characteristics of economic resources. And one of their characteristics you will realize that they have, uh, they are scarce. They are scarce in supply. Economic resources are scarce in supply, meaning they are not available in sufficient quantities. Look at the piece of land. Many of us would want to have as much land as possible here in Kenya and even abroad, but we may not have as much as we want because Human wants are, are not human wants. Economic resources are scarce. Very nice. Then we go to the second point. They have monetary value. You have to pay for them for you to obtain them. And that is why if you wanted to buy a mobile phone, you have to pay for it. You cannot be given for free. If you wanted to buy a book, book is an economic value, economic resource. Why? It has an exchange value. When you're buying a soda, the same. And anything else that you pay for it, for you to obtain it, it is an economic resource. Then, are we, are we together at that point? I can see many of you very attentive. That is very good. Then we look at the next point. Economic resources, they have alternative uses. Do you remember when you're talking about land and the uses of land? What, by the way, what are the various uses of land? Do you remember talking about land can be used for cultivation? Do you remember? Very nice. Do you remember when you are talking about land can be used for rental purposes? Look at the building, maybe probably where you are, the residential areas, there are those who are using it for, for the purpose of uh, renting. Do you remember all that? How else can you use land? Do you, do you remember when you are talking about mining? Very nice. So therefore, land has alternative uses. It's just an example of an economic resource. Then, the other characteristics of economic resources is that they have utility. What do you think are the utility? And what are the types of utilities that you looked at? Do you remember talking about the various types of utilities, the price utility? Time utility. Do you remember? Very nice. When we're talking about time utility and how it is created, when you keep something until its appropriate time, how is that? That is time utility. Very nice. When we talk about place utility, we give an example. When bread is baked in a company, it is taken to the market. 
Yeah, that movement from the point of production to the point of consumption is what you are calling price utility because it is changing the price. Then, do you remember when we are talking about form utility? When you convert a raw material into a finished good, do you remember? Very nice. That is the price, not the price, form utility. And then the other one is possession, possession utility. I know some, some of the books will talk about possessive, but we don't use the word possessive. We use the word possession utility. That one has to do with the change of what? Ownership. A good example. When you go to a bookshop, you buy a certain book, a certain revision book in business, because I know you like business. Uh, it changes the ownership from the shop owner to the person who is buying it. That is what you call possession utility. Let us go back now to our question. Question number 16. I was saying that economic resources, they have utility. Utility is the ability of a product to satisfy human wants. Ability of a product to satisfy human wants. So therefore, don't forget that. Sasa, thank you. Then the other one, the other characteristics of economic resources that we had talked about there is that they are unevenly contributed, uh, distributed, sorry. They are unevenly distributed. And that is why you fight economic resources are not available in all places. Why is it that we don't have gold in all places in Kenya? It is because it is an economic resource and it is not available in all places. How comes that we have coconut only in Mombasa? Yeah? or in the coastal region, and you don't have them here in our school. Have you ever thought of that? It is because it is an economic resource and it is unevenly distributed. And that is why you find that different minerals are found in different parts of the world. When it comes to wildlife, you find them in only in some places and not in all the places. Remember the white rhino? How many are they? Where are they found? Remember that? Just food for thought. Then we go to question number 17. And I think question number 17 I have tackled it in question number 16. The types of utility. And we have the form, position, time, and place. Don't forget that. I know you are a good student and you are going to remember uh, that. Then I want to look at question number 18. Question number 18 is a question that gave some students some headache. I don't know whether it happened to you. Did it happen? You are not alone. Uh, it was asking of the factors that inhibit labor as a factor of production. Yeah? Factors that inhibit what? Uh, mobility of labor. In, in simple words, the question was asking, uh, if you look at labor, what is labor? Have you ever thought of that? Yeah? Labor is human with ability to think and capacity to get annoyed. So when you get employed, what you go to offer there is labor, labor services. Yeah? Are you there? Then, at times, you may, you may want to go and work elsewhere. Yeah? You may want to go and work elsewhere. What are those factors that may, makes, may make you to decide that I'm going to go and work abroad, that I'm going to work at, in, uh, in the coastal region? Have you ever thought of that? Today you are working, somebody has advertised a job which you know you can do better. Yeah? What are those factors that can make you to move from one point to another, to go and work there? Those are, that is what you are asking. So therefore, the question was asking, factors that inhibit labor, what now can prevent you from going to work in that other place? Yeah? 
the factors are as follows. One of them is poor remuneration, poor salaries. Although in business we don't like using the word poor, yeah, we make look for a better word. Instead of using the word poor, you can have a word like uh, it depends on the usage. At times inadequate, you can use it is much better. But for now, for the purpose of this lesson, allow me. Have you allowed me? Very good. Allow me to use the word poor. Assuming you have been working in the capital setting of Nairobi, then you have found another job elsewhere. What will make you to go there? Or what can make you not to go? One is poor remuneration. In the salary that you are being given is not as attractive as the one that you are getting. Of course, you will not go and work there. And that is why those doctors who came from, from Cuba last week, they came because the remuneration, the salaries that they were being offered here was much, was bet, was more attractive and better than what maybe they were getting in Cuba. I hope they are not hearing what I'm saying. Then the other point is the infrastructure, inadequate infrastructure. How many of us would want to go and work in a desert? How many? Have you ever thought of that? You have gotten a job which is very attractive. But when you look at the infrastructure of that place, you say no. Where instead of using cars, you will be walking to move from one point to another, or using donkeys and camels. Have you ever thought of using camels to move from one place to another in a distance of 50 kilometers? Have you ever thought of that? So somebody may not be interested of moving to go and work in a place where the infrastructure is not good. So infrastructure here, we are talking about load, we are talking about security, we are talking about water, we are talking about communication, among others. The other point is the climate. Somebody may opt not to go and work elsewhere because of the harsh climatic condition. If the climate is not favorable, Let's say you are going to work in a place that is very cold. Yeah? Very, very cold. You can imagine where you have to, to put out all your jackets, like five of them, all the time, and you have gone there to work. So some, there, somebody will opt not to go and work from there. The other one is poor health of the laborer. You may realize that uh, because of different, maybe you may have a health condition that may not favor you to go and work in another place. So you may realize that if you change the environment and your state of health may not allow you to go and work from there. Then the other point is the skills. You may not have the, the skills that are needed to go and work in that place. And I would, I would want to take the same example from Cuba. I know when the moment they realized that the Kenya needed some doctors or specialists, I know many of them were interested. But what prevented them from coming? Have you ever thought of that? It is because some of them did not have the skills that the Kenyan government wanted. So therefore that one prevented the mobility of labor from Cuba to Kenya. Many of us here would want to go and work abroad, but probably you may not have the skills that they are having, or you may have more than what they are seeking. Food for thought. Then, you had question number 19. Question number 19. I will still give you a chance to ask questions as soon as we are done with the paper. We have two more questions to go. Please bear with me. Allow me to talk alone at the moment. Will you give me that chance? Thank you. Then, question number 19. Question number 19. Uh, it was mainly asking. You, have, you are given uh, some items. For example, the way, shape, crew, and owners. 
Then you are told you classify them according to their factors of production. Factors of production is a topic, uh, topic number four in business studies in form one. I know by now you have finished topic number seven. Yeah. Uh, that topic number four, production, when you are looking at the factors of production, you see that the factors of production are four. Do you remember them? We have land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Do you remember them? Do you remember their, uh, how do you call them? Their rewards? What was the reward for labor? Very good. Uh, the reward for labor is wages and salaries. What about the reward for capital? Very nice. Reward for capital? Very nice. Capital, when you invest your capital, you get interest. Very good. And then, what about the reward for land? When you have a piece of land and you then use it for those alternative uses that we are talking about, what did we say? Land, the reward for land is what? Land and loyalties. Very good. What about entrepreneurship? Remember entrepreneurship, the fifth topic that we did in Form 1 before going home? Do you remember? Very good. And we said, what is entrepreneurship? The process through which I cannot hear you. Yeah? The process of identifying a business opportunity and acquiring the necessary resources to start. Very good. So, and we said, what is the reward for entrepreneurship? Yeah? Profit. Very nice. So, therefore, those are the four factors of production. Going back to our question number 19, the way the ship, the crew, and the owners, then you are told, yeah, you show, yeah, you, you match them. When talk of the way, among the four factors of production, jia, njia iko api, yeah, iko on the land. So therefore, that one is very simple. The way you're talking of the land, what about the ship? Can you obtain it without paying for it? And what is the, what was the purpose of making the ship? Yeah, so that you can generate more and more income. So therefore, the the shape here represented capital. When you the capital, remember, we talk of uh, goods that are produced that are used to produce others. Then, when talk of the crew, here we are talking about the those employees, those personnel who work on the ship. Yeah, which factor are we going to classify them? Yes, very good. They are laborers, so we are, we, they are laborers, so they present labor as a factor of production. Kariuki Kelvin, I can see your answer very good. Then we have the owners. Why are we going to put the owners? Yeah, the owners, okay, the owners are entrepreneurs, the owners are the entrepreneurs. Very good. So then the very last question, the very last question on the exam that we did, the very last question was about, uh, you classify the foreign goods as either producer or consumer. Remember, producer goods are the goods that are used in the production of others. Please come for me. Very good. Then what about consumer goods? These are the goods that are intended for the what? For the final user of the product. So the consumer goods are meant to be used by the final user of the product. And I remember when you were looking at a certain question there, when you look at the classification of consumer goods, Tukasama Kuna, speciality, there is convenience goods, and there is what? Uh, there are those goods that we talked of, uh, goods that are kept. Yeah? We have the speciality, convenience, and shopping goods. Those are the consumer goods. But going back to our question, uh, 
how will we classify the machines? Machines are what? Producer goods. Machines are the producer goods, which is true because machines are used in production process. Then what about a private car? What about a private car? How are we going to treat it? Is it producer or consumer? Yeah, it is consumer. Very good. Private car is a consumer. What about iron ore? Iron ore is the raw material. So iron ore, we are going to, call it to, to, to put it as a, as a producer. Very nice. And then the very last point about clothing. A clothing producer or consumer? Clothing are consumer goods. Otherwise, uh, I'll give you a chance. What you'll do for me to give you a chance to respond or to ask a question, uh, I'll ask you to I will ask you to raise up your hand, then I will unmute you so that you can ask your question. Is that one in order? Very good. I can see somebody by someone, is known as Samuel. Samuel, go ahead. Should I have a question? Please ask. Can you, can you please define the speciality goods? Now special goods. Very nice. When you talk of the specialty goods, these are the goods that consumers attach a lot of importance on them. Consumers buy goods and attach a lot of importance on them. And a good example is what you call what? Uh, the people who buy, you call them what? Those um, what we call them. You find somebody, for example, buying those cars that were being used before. Second hand. He attaches a lot of importance. We call them what? The one I'm looking for. Yeah. Second hand. What we call them? Second yes. hand. Second hand. Bana, baby, second hand. <laughs> we call them something uh, looking for a certain one. If I remember them, I'll, that word, I'll. I'll, I'll Vintage. Vintage, very nice. Vintage. Uh, then, Musa. Musa, go ahead. Yeah, teacher, I, was, uh, I wanted to ask the same question. Oh, thank you. Okay. Then we have Myron. Myron. Please ask. Myron. Uh, excuse me, Cha. Go ahead. I have two questions. Go ahead. The, the first one is explain how scarcity relates to choice and opportunity cost in satisfying human wants. Go to the next, the second one. And the three characteristics of speciality goods. Good. Uh, when you talk about, if you are told, uh, you, you, you show how scarcity is a you explain the concept of scarcity, choice, and opportunity, cost. I will start with the scarcity. When you talk about the scarcity, we are talking about the limited nature of what? Resources. The limited nature of economic resources in relation to their demand. That is scarcity. When you have little than what you want to have. Then you have what you call choice. When you define the word choice, we talk about the act of deciding which want to satisfy first, given the alternatives. The act of deciding which one to, do, to satisfy first uh, due to scarcity of resources. The act of deciding which one to satisfy first due to scarcity of resources. So you can see how they are relating. You are making a choice because you have limited what? 
options. You don't have enough money to buy what you need, so you make a choice because of the scarcity of the resources. Then we have opportunity cost. By definition, we say opportunity cost refers to the value of the foregone alternative after a choice has been made. The value of the foregone alternative after a choice has been made. So therefore, when you are making a choice, you normally have other options. And out of the many options that you have, what do you do? You say, I have a thousand shilling, and I wanted to buy one to three items. Then you realize that the thousand will not enable you to buy all the items that you need. So you decide which are the items that are more priority. So you buy them. So whatever you forego, whatever you say that this one can wait, is what you call opportunity cost. Thank you. Another person, I can see Davis Munene. Please go ahead. Davis? I haven't raised my hand. I, had, I can see your hands is up. Okay, thank you. Then, Musa, okay, Musa, why had I given you a question, a chance? Musa Mali? Yeah, 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 teacher. Okay. Let us have uh, Idris. Idris Juma. Yes, teacher, I wanted to ask <laughs> the meaning of scale of preference. Scale of preference, thank you. When you talk of the scale of preference, we talk about does that list There are some people who are just joking around there. I think my screen had gone down, but now I'm there. Uh, somebody was asking about scale of preference. Scale of preference is a list of unsatisfied wants, starting with the most pressing, going to the least pressing, that list of unsatisfied want, starting with the most pressing want up to the least pressing want during the satisfaction of human want. Whatever you prepare as a budget, listing your wants according to which one is more pressing and which one is least pressing, which one is more of priority and which one is not of priority. Then I'll give uh, somebody, Calvin, Calvin Mwaneki. I wanted to ask, ask what is the what is the relationship between scarcity choice and opportunity cost? I think I've explained the three terms. You see, the choice is that act of choosing. Scarcity is when the resources are. are Scarcity is when the resources, resources are hot, uh, limited in supply. Opportunity cost is when you forego an item when you are buying another one. When you forego this item, for example, let's say you had 50 more in your pocket, you wanted to buy a bread, at the same time, you wanted to buy a book. Then you realize that the book is more pressing, is more important than the bread. So you first of all say, if they had more money, I would have bought both of them. But since I have 50 bob, I'll buy the book. So the bread here becomes the opportunity cost. That other item that you would have bought if you had enough resources. So then we have Davis. Davis for the name. Davis, are you there? I've not raised my then hand. Then I can go ahead. I've not raised my hand. Okay, then I think you have two hands. Because, uh, maybe you have raised one and you have forgotten. Then, uh, Emmanuel Kaliuki. 
Emmanuel. Yes. Go ahead. Ja. I yes. have a question. Can you please? Uh, can you please tell me how job security can be a factor that can inhibit labor as a factor of production? Job insecurity. Yes. <clears throat> you see that when you have insecurity, is when you are fearing, there is that what you call fear of unknown. When you are fearing that, yes, there's a job that is being offered in a place called Qatar. But are you fearing for your security? If you are fearing, then you will opt to remain here in the country because you, are, you have that fear of unknown. That is simply what I was talking about. Then I can see somebody by the name Liloy. Go ahead. Liloy. Excuse me, teacher. What are yes. the what are the measures that consumers may may take to satisfy unlimited ones? Some of the measures. Measures that consumers may take to satisfy unlimited ones. Unlimited ones. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you see, human wants are so many. And the resources that we have in our, at our disposal is limited. So some of the measures here is to come up with a scale of preference, where you satisfy the most pressing want before the least pressing want. So you first of all come up with a scale of preference. You ask yourself which one is more basic, uh, not very basic generally, which one is more pressing. And of course, you realize that you need to satisfy your basic wants before secondary want. And probably another measure can be can be what? Apart from deciding which one to satisfy first, I think more of those points is guided by the scale of preference, where you give priority to the ones that are more pressing than the others. Then we have Manuel. Manuel, yes, go ahead. Uh, please clarify for me about division of labor and specialization. Very good. Uh, division of labor and specialization is the last part of the topic of production. And when we talk of the division of labor, we talk of when one divides labor into different stages of production. When you divide labor into different stages of production. For example, I'll give you an example of somebody who makes uh, jackets, leather jackets. This tailor may employ a number of people. One of them, his work can be cutting down the pieces of cloth. That is his own work. Another person can be employed to, to join the parts yeah, that has been uh, cut down to small pieces. Then another person, his work can be uh, to put the buttons on the same jacket or to put that zip or that uh, that the one that we use. Uh, then another person can be given the same work of ironing ironing the jacket. So that is labor which has been divided into different stages of production. That is division of labor. Then specialization. Specialization is when you allocate uh, when you allocate duties to people based on their levels of qualifications and experience. When you allocate people a job because of how best they can perform that task. That is specialization when you allocate people the work according to their field of specialization. Then you can have somebody by the name Newton Neuro. Newton Neuro, go ahead. I don't have a question. Okay. 
Then uh, Davis, Davis have asked, I think it's only a few of us who are asking questions. I can see Manuel, whom we have given a space. Uh, who else? I can see Davis Monene, we have given you a chance. But let me let us. That is Brian. Brian, go ahead. I have a question. Go ahead. What is the meaning of scale of preference? Uh, thank you. I think I had answered that question. Scale of preference, the list of unsatisfied ones written in the order of priority. The list of unsatisfied ones written in the order of priority. Then you can have Musa. Musa. Go ahead. Musa is not ready. Joseph Muchunu. Yeah, yeah, ready, ready, teacher. I'm ready. Go ahead. State three areas under which business activities can be classified. Please come again. Three areas under which business activities can be classified. Very good. When the areas under which business activities can be classified, we have what we call we have extraction, manufacturing, construction. Provision of services, trading activities, among other uh, classification. Thank you. Then we can have uh, okay. Adam. No, Adam. I think we had given you a chance. Uh, Myron. Also, we had given you a chance. But let us hear from Myron. Go ahead. Uh, excuse me, Chair. Yes. How can technology be a disadvantage to, to a business? How can, is it advancement in technology or use of outdated technology? Yeah, just in any way. Okay, thank you. Uh, that question, how can technology be of a disadvantage to the business? Remember when you adopt a new technology, it requires your employees to be trained on the use of that new technology. And if they are not well trained, or if they don't have the knowledge of the use of the new technology, they may incur losses in the business where you, you realize that goods have been produced and then a mistake has happened or occurred and then uh, that one brings to a loss. The other thing is that when you use a low or an outdated level of technology, the quality of the goods that you are going to produce will be compromised. And even the quantity, how much you can produce. And then look at when you use an outdated technology, how you can have so many breakages, stoppage of work due to stoppage of work due to breaking down of machines. So therefore, there are many points under that. James Okero. No, ah, it's already, I wanted to add something to that point. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joseph Babu. Babu. Babu, do you have a question? Babu, then can uh, have. Yes, Chair. Go ahead. I state four reasons why human resources are important to the Kenyan economy. Reasons why human resources are, are important. important to the Kenyan economy. Generally, we're asking about the importance of uh, human resources. Yeah. I think here is more of a. Human resources. Uh, one, they provide labor, which is important. 
uh, two, they provide the expertise that is needed. Remember, this is a just point that we are, it is a, it is a question that we are thinking, uh, it's a good one. They provide the expertise which is needed. Uh, another thing, they also provide governance, governance, yeah? They provide governance because they are the one who work as the managers, who control and coordinate the activities. Uh, and many other points that you can get under the same. Then, uh, who else? I can see, I'm looking for somebody who have not asked out of the people who have, uh, here from Davis Boy. Davis Munene Boy. Are you there? Davis Munene Boy. Can you hear me? Okay. Go ahead, uh, Newton. Yes. Go ahead. I don't have a question. What about uh, Samsung Galaxy S7? We are uh, the one with Samsung Galaxy S7. That is why you normally encourage you people to be using your names. Please like your name so that you can feel free to share it when needed. Then we have Kelvin Kalyuki. Kelvin Kalyuki? Yes. Go ahead. About, you talked about convenience and Speciality. Can you define convenience when you are talking about consumer goods? When you're talking about consumer goods, okay, thank you. Uh, when you talk of the consumer goods, remember we say consumer goods are the goods that are used by, by the user, the final use of the goods, which is the consumer. And we say there are different classification. Convenience goods, these are the goods that are bought by consumers to satisfy common wants. They are satisfied, they are bought to satisfy the common wants. Think of those goods that you buy that satisfy common wants. For example, when you buy a pen, it's meant for the purpose of writing. I don't think there's somebody who buys a pen, can it happen? No. That is a convenience goods. Goods that are bought for common wants. When somebody buys something like a toothpaste, yeah? is meant to satisfy common wants of the consumers. Then we have the specialty goods. Specialty goods, we have said, these are the goods that consumers attach out of importance and value on them. And a good example is, uh, we have given an example of uh, goods that people buy and they attach a lot of importance on them. Uh, Maybe when you buy, you can buy something like a watch, a sculpture, yeah? That people attach a lot of importance on them. Then we can have, uh, and I think I'll, uh, I'll now, Alex Moriyuki. Alex Moriyuki. Alex, are you there? I think some of us are just there and they are keeping quiet. I uh, want to get somebody by the name Kuria. Somewhere Kuria, say something. Kuria. No question, sir. Ati? I have no question. No, say something. Uh, since you have no question, 
Alex Curtis. Alex Curtis. Papa. Sweetie. Yes. Sweetie. Yes. Ask a question. When you are told to highlight drawbacks of direct production. Go ahead. When you talk to highlight drawbacks of yes. direct production, you have gotten your question correctly. Yeah. Drawbacks are the disadvantages, are the limitations. Drawbacks are the limitations or the disadvantages. And direct production, we said, is when production is aimed at personal, for personal use. So when you produce goods for your own domestic use, that is direct production. And what are the demerits? What are the, the, the limitations? One, poor quality goods are produced because production is not aimed at sale. Poor quality goods are produced use of low level of technology use of low level of technology is used and then we also have other points which you can get there in the books so the drawbacks there i think was the one that was giving you a bit of charity the drawbacks stand for the limitations the limitations so i can still see Somebody by the name Alex Murioki, please contribute. Alex. Alex Murioki. Alan, Alan Bradley. Alan Bradley. So I don't have a question. Wait, wait. You have been attending the lesson. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, in pollution. Is... Go ahead. In pollution, sir. Uh, what if we say you use of machines that do not uh, give a lot of sound because also sound can be polluted? Use of machines that do not do it, do not pollute mm -hmm. the environment. Yes. That one no, is okay. Noise, sir. That do not produce out of yes. noise in the environment. Yes. That one, to some extent, it is true. Then I can see Amos Minor. Amos. Go ahead. Don't tell us you are sleeping. Alan Kiprop. Alan Kiprop. But I just have a question. Wait, wait, Alan. You are still fearing the members. Yeah? Okay. Any other person with a question for today? Musa, I can see you are raising your hand. Please go ahead, Musa Malim. Factors that have led to dominance of substance production despite development. Okay. Explain factors that have led to dominance of substance production despite development in technology in Kenya. Factors that have led to dominance in subsistence production despite advancement in technology. You see, this is a yeah. question that is asking. Why is it that in Kenya or even developed countries, we have people 
who are still producing for their own personal consumption, despite the fact that technology has grown and they can make use of that and they produce what for selling. One of them is high rate of poverty. Yeah, high rate of poverty. Most of the most of the Kenyans are peasant farmers. Yeah, so there is that uh, rate of poverty. Uh, then we have the point. The other point is about ignorance. Ignorance about most of them. Ignorance about most of the people, as they don't have that interest in joining trade. And then you have the other point of uh, inadequate capital or lack of capital. They don't have the money. They don't want to do it, but they don't have the money. And then the other point is uh, inadequate government support. Inadequate government support is also a factor. Uh, then I can give somebody a chance to participate. Anyone with a question? Remember, you have a few minutes uh, so that we can end the session. Questions? I can see there are those who are not raising their hands. I, I want to look for them on this other side. That is why you see me facing on this direction so that I can see uh, those who are not working. I can see somebody Samuel Lukenya, say something. Samuel Lukenya, please unmute. Um, maybe I, I, I ask a, a question. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, when uh, I, I, but there's a question I have asked and I have and I have asked asking, but how can one improve? Let's say I run a business. I want to improve the business in terms of labor. How can I improve it? Because I want more people to work for me. And I want to improve it in, the, in the, uh, the aspect of labor. How can I improve it? Very nice question. How can, you, how can one improve productivity of labor? There are so many ways. Remember labor is human with, uh, with ability to think and capacity to get annoyed. How can you make him more productive? One by motivating the laborer. You motivate them. Two, you involve them in decision making, if it is in the business. You have to ensure that these are the same people who are involved in implementing your policies. So if you don't involve them in decision making, then you may find it hard for them to implement. And then three, through training. When you train people, and then you give them the right equipment. And of course, their productivity will be higher. And then the other thing, you promote them based on merit. This is where you now tell them, I'll now promote you based on how active you are, on how productive you are. So when you promote them based on merit, definitely uh, they become more productive. I will give Dominic Kip Kemoy. Dominic Kipkemoy, please go ahead. Dominic. Dominic Mepotea. What about Tyrone John? Tyrone John? Yes, teacher. I have a question. Uh, would, is land a free resource? Land, okay, land, okay, thank you. Any other, okay. Uh, he's asking whether land is a free resource. Of course, land is God-given. So don't need that. 
tunajinyakulia we say that this is our land but land is a, a free resource but despite being a free resource land is god given and it has economic it has economic value and that economic value it qualifies to me to become an economic resource so land is a economic resource and has economic value then we have kirui noe kirui noe what are the go ahead kirui I have a question what are the problems faced in the satisfaction of human wants very well, nice one human wants are too many to be free satisfied human wants are too many to be free satisfied number two human wants keep on recurring human wants keep on recurring and then the other one the other point the resources needed to satisfy human wants are scarce the resources needed to satisfy human wants are scarce and then the other point different individuals have different tastes and preferences and then we also have another point government policies because there are times you may want to satisfy your want let's say for example for those who normally i know they are not part of us here where are Samuel to Kenya? Where are you going? Samuel. Would you want to go Okay. Uh, I know those who are not. Let us take this example. Those who normally consume alcohol. Right now, the government is very adamant on the bars should not be open. So, what is happening to the consumers of that commodity? Do you think they are facing some challenges? Yes, because they want to consume the item and the item the government is saying, not now. So they are still facing the challenge. Then we can have somebody, uh, somebody else to, I can see, let me look for you, Derek. Derek, go ahead. Derek. I'd like to know the difference between royalty and rent. Very well, uh, royalty and rent. Okay, thank you. When you talk of the royalties, I know it is in aspect in relation to land. Let me start with rent, the one that you know. Rent is the regular payment that is normally paid by a tenant to a landlord. If I was to use those two words, the regular amount of money that one pays due to occupation of a certain piece of land or a house belonging to another person. Then loyalties is what you pay. Loyalties is normally paid to the government because of acquisition of land to the government. Then you can have somebody else. Uh, let us look for somebody who has a question. Nixon, do you have a question? Yeah? Nixon Mamati. Nixon Mamati. Yes. Go ahead. Can you highlight for me the difference between skill and skill and semi skill? Okay. I give you the difference between skilled. I believe I believe you are talking to skilled in relation to labor and skilled and semi skilled. When talk of the skilled labor. 
we are referring to the labor, a type of labor whereby the laborer is trained to perform the assigned task where you have been employed based on your level of qualification. Semi skilled is a, a group of laborer whereby they perform non specialized. Uh, non specialized labor. When you employ somebody to perform non specialized labor, at umemwajiri kazi, but anezafanya kazi oyote. You have not, he is a skilled personnel, yes, but he doesn't perform, he is not specialized in a certain area. Then I think unskilled are those type of employees whom we employ without any educational requirement. You don't look at the, the academic qualifications for them to do, to be employed or to be hired to carry out uh, that duty or that work. Any other person with a question? Those who are still in, I can see some who are raising their hearts. Although when I give them a chance, they are saying, I not mine. So allow me to look for another person here in the group. I can see Manuel. Are you asking a question, Manuel? I can see your hands on top of your head. Not your head if you're asking. Okay. Let me give you a chance. You can go ahead, Manuel. Yes, apart from a good business plan, what are other factors that contribute to business success? Uh, very new, very nice. You are saying apart from a good business plan, what are the factors that promote to business success? There are so many. Uh, one, of, actually, a number of factors. One of them is uh, proper location of the business, proper record keeping of the business, availability of funds in the business. Uh, the other thing is uh, uh, good relations with your customers. So, so a point. Uh, other factors have availability of uh, government support, infra, a bit, a bit of infrastructure, political stability, among many other factors. Any other person with a question? Any other person with a question? You can see our time is up. Uh, this time, any other question? Kuna mtu mbaya swani? Achim? Achim? Yes. Go ahead. So I don't have a question. So Achim? Okay, thank you. If you don't have a question. So, if there is no other question, allow me to appoint somebody by the name Samuel Kenya. Samuel Kenya, how are you? Excuse me, Tisha. Yes. Go ahead. For fact that hinder geographical of labor, not character. Which one do you apply? Please come again. Mention for fact that ability of labor which which answers do you apply and you're not told to write the characteristic character thank you okay when talk of the factors that inhibit mobility of labor we look at labor of course is individuals people go to work in different places what can prevent them from going to other places or what can make them to go yeah one of them is salary. If you are paying better, 
you go. If the opposite happens, you don't. Yeah? Climate is a factor. Then there is another point of uh, family ties. There are people who don't like going to work abroad because they don't want to be as this, they, they want to remain within their family ties. They don't want to be because of that family ties. The other point, the other issue that can make somebody to go and work elsewhere is uh, that spirit of adventure. Somebody may go and work and get the same salary that he was getting, but because he wants to adventure. So Samuel, Lukenya. Samuel. Yes. Please play for us so that we can end the session. Let's play. Um, okay, the members, name of Jesus. members, please for just for a minute, I'm unmuted all of you. You can you have an option of unmuting yourself so that you can say amen all together. Is that what you know that? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Amen. Pray for us. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Another day that you can trust the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.